we're going to call the meeting to order at 6.15. People are coming in. I wanted to start the meeting today with, uh, we're getting to the community engagement and all that, but I want to start the meeting today with a little celebration. Tonight is Megan's last meeting with, I'm going to try to put it It's Megan's last meeting with us. So I, we as a board, wanted to appreciate you. I promised Anne that I was not going to do a fake thing. Here I am. We have elected Native members, so they can help us uh, celebrate. Uh, we want to thank you for your work, your vision. We feel, I can't even look at you. We feel confident in our district's ability to stay with their values and to continue the work of what is best for our students. We can't thank you enough for your time, your expertise, uh, the light that you have brought us to our district and the, all of the time and the work that you have shared in creating system for us, systems for us that we're, you know, will continue to be with us even when we're not with you. We, you know, we wish you the best uh, and we are excited for what you're going to do for the future generations of superintendents and educators. So with that, it will last for you from the board. And this is a little thing from the board for you. And just, I was wondering if we could give Megan a round of applause. And it also Mark's last meeting with us. So we want to thank Mark and wish him well in his retirement. And he is going to guide us through this, this meeting today with the timing. So don't take it against him. <laughs> the board also has a little thing for you, Mark. Very nice. Thank you. I feel much better than his name and I'm able to keep it together. So, uh, I want to start this meeting by just reminding uh, our community members and our board uh, that you know that we play a big role in uh, setting the tone for our district and how we treat each other, how we talk to each other. That there's no wrong questions today in the meeting. Please lean in into that discomfort. Be present as much as you can. Uh, don't try. Don't get into conversations between each other that are distracting for for other people. If you can help it. If, you know, practice both just saying I statements instead of speaking for other people and be curious about the work. If, if, and, you know, our, I, I know that we always talk about intent and impact. Our intent is to listen to everybody. Our intent is, I know that this kind of public engagement is not the most Engaging for all of us is not satisfactory for the board and it's not satisfactory for you, but we're going to listen uh, to you. That's the format that we have for right now, but we're looking forward to seeing you on June 26th in our uh, district-wide community forums when it will be more engaged. But thank you for being here. So with that, uh, I just welcome you. If there's any adjustments to the agenda, then I'll talk about logistics. Is there any adjustments to the agenda? Go ahead. Um, yeah, I'd like to move to add five extra minutes if needed to public comment because at the Worcester Front Porch Forum poster, I didn't get it in that there was time at the previous finance meeting. I just want to add a little extra time if needed. Okay, so we had what originally 15 minutes and then we moved it to 30. We'll... Oh, it says 15. Yeah, so we, we that's what we said in the public forum, in the front porch forum message that we were, sorry. Okay. So, we, so we're going to leave it to 30 if that's okay, so that you can do, yeah, yeah. because we didn't change it on this because we did it after. That's fine. 
Yeah, as you remember, the steering committee met just yesterday. <laughs> I remember. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> so there's no adjustments to the agenda, so we're going to move into, we already we, uh, welcome you. So in public comments, uh, I just wanted to remind uh, people that we are not going to engage in a back and forth. Please introduce yourself. We have two minutes per, per person. We're excited to have actual kids with us today. So don't worry if the kids are crying or anything. That is a very welcome sound. Um, the, the comments is, well, I guess I, just, I said it all again. Just, uh, we're, we're trying to hold space. We know that it's uh, what it, that is difficult uh, today, and I'm hopeful that by working together and grounding ourselves in the vision and the core beliefs and our strategic plan, we can uh, we can work together and you know with the community and the board and uh, bring to our, our our students what they need for their future. So with that, uh, people online, please. We're going to take turns. We're going to start with, we have a lot of people uh, present here. I haven't seen any hands up quite yet. So we're going to start with people in the audience. And please introduce yourself. And, and you have two minutes. So if you could raise your hand, go ahead. Hi, my name is Jordan Nobler. I'm from Worcester. I'm a Jody parent. Um, I'd like to share a letter that some of you may have seen that's been signed by a number of our community members. I'll do my best to, to get through it. Maybe one of my colleagues can, uh, can jump in and finish if I don't. Um, but we'd like to just share some, some requests to the board. So as members of the community uh, who care deeply about our kids and the future of our schools, we really appreciate the board's efforts to respond to changes in our district, including fewer students overall and very real concerns about rising education taxes. Um, we think that creative solutions need to be explored and considered, and we believe that the board um, is moving too quickly in presenting closures of Doty and Callis as the solution and uh, pushing our communities toward a vote on those school closures as early as November. Um, so we have five asks. We ask that you create a new timeline that makes real community engagement the top priority um, and allows for exploring alternative options. Uh, one is to create a timeline that makes community engagement, as I said, the top priority. Um, because closing schools that have been at the heart of our communities for generations is obviously a grave decision with far-reaching impacts for our kids, our families, and those communities. Um, these are decisions that can't be easily undone, and our communities will be forever different as a result of their consequences. Uh, the communities that be most impacted by school closures deserve the opportunity to engage in this process in a real way. The other towns deserve to hear and consider those perspectives, and that means that the board will need to, in our view, extend the timeline for that decision-making and voting. September 18th is too soon for the board to decide on a final option and potentially set the stage for a November school closure vote in Worcester and Kellis. Uh, we want real dialogue, real understanding by our communities of the decisions that we may be asked to make, and then consideration of the interests of all of those who will be impacted by those decisions. We want them to be informed and not emotional or reactive. We also ask for concrete data that will illuminate the potential benefits and also the losses and challenges of closing Doty and Kellis and putting our kids on buses for long rides to and from schools in other towns. Thank you. Are there any others in the public? Go ahead. Hi, my name is Mary Lou. I'm also a Worcester resident, and this was the tale just pick up um, where we're going to be So, um, <laughs> so we request that the board also share concrete data that eliminates potential benefits and also allows the challenges of closing Jody and Callis. Putting kids on buses, it could be long rides to and from schools that are in other towns. As we're looking at certain funds, we would like to get real about equity. We know that equity is a central goal for you and for everyone. So these schools often has the biggest impact, unfortunately, on our most vulnerable kids, families, and communities. And we know that no option is going to be all good or all bad. Um, no impact is going to be all positive or all negative. But let's try to have an honest conversation so that we can make a decision that feels good and I think the best one for all of our kids in a way. Next, we would really encourage the board to explore other options. While many board and community members have expressed interest in alternatives to closing Doty and Mortalis, for example, such as exploring community schools to bring essential services into school buildings to meet the needs of kids and also the community at large, the only options that it seems the board has explored have involved closing Doty and Calabella. 
members of our communities have ideas for alternative options, and we would really like to make sure that they have a chance to be put forward and support to hear them and consider them. Uh, we'd love to embrace this opportunity for visionary thinking and creativity and shaping the future of education in our community. We'd like to explore other options beyond just school closures as a pathway to thriving, sustainable schools and our district. Lastly, we really ask that you engage with us as communities. Authentic community engagement would look like opportunities for community members to interact more with the board. Um, more channels for asking questions, receiving answers, and getting information that all community members need and understand. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? Go ahead, please introduce yourself. Uh, Lisa Hanna, I'm Buster Parent. Thank you all for your continued hard work and dedication on the board to our students and communities. I'm confident that tonight during the communication plan and configuration update, um, you'll share more specific details about what the community engagement plan will look like in your advance. I believe that we share with you a goal of meaningful and thorough conversation about this important moment for our district. As you're aware, the community of Worcester is already engaging right now in important dialogue and question asking with each other and with you about the options on the table. The board has said that in regards to school closures, the data may, be, may necessitate difficult choices. I ask that tonight you please discuss specific data points that will be brought to community forums that will address questions that have already been asked and inform any difficult choices that are to be made. I also ask that tonight you discuss specifics of how these community forums will be tailored to best meet communities where they are in the process. Given the questions and feedback already given by Worcester residents, new information must be brought to our forum in response to the questions that have been proposed rather than just gathering questions and feedback. I ask that tonight you discuss specifically the shared community engagement plan, uh, how it will go beyond two to three community forums in order to achieve the level of conversation that has been stated as the goal of this process. Additionally, I'd like to ask that um, we talk tonight about the language in phase three of the communication documents. We have received word from the board that you recognize the need for additional input and are considering options beyond the initial three simulation. Currently, the language says, include post four meetings at Callis and Doty in October and central office needs to clarify, clearly articulate how risks and reassignments will occur. This language assumes some predetermined outcomes. If we envision an authentic community engagement, the community needs to be confident that they have new stakeholders with a voice in the process and that decisions have not already been assumed. Thank you so much for your time and all the incredibly, incredibly difficult. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. I'm Deborah Bogart, and I've been a teacher in this district for 47 years. I taught at Doty when I was just grown. And many of my first graders in the school are people and And I happened to be at the Worcester Art Center and talked to some people that I had in first grade, and they were saying they don't, some of them don't own phones. Don't own uh, um, computers and did not know. So I think we definitely did have word of mouth, not just depending on front work forum or people that have computers. I want to say that. Thank you. No. No, I've seen uh, Mr. President and for the parents. Um, so there's usually a bunch of questions that I would love to, you know, I know that you're not going to have answers from tonight, maybe even soon, but they're all questions that I would really want to answer before. Being asked to vote on whether or not to close our school. One, what are the projected net, net cost savings, both in terms of tax rates and also cost for people, of closing those schools in the first year and over the next five to ten years, assuming a hypothetical stable rate that extends in the years, for example, 50% annually, and also incorporating the increased costs of busing, staffing, and potential building modifications to accommodate incoming students. What's the money? Two, um, how would those potential net savings impact actual tax burdens by towns over the same five to ten years? Again, assuming the same. Three, what is the cost per student breakdown per school? Given that Doty had one of the lowest cost per student rates prior to merging, is there data to suggest that the smaller schools? Currently, cost more, but significantly more for students than the larger schools. Uh, for given that Act 46 mergers overall did not achieve the intended goal of long term cost savings, as the recent Mickey Digger article, do we have any data to suggest that closing our schools would actually result in cost savings in the long term? 
five, what are the actual class size recommendations for elementary grades? Is there evidence that those standards are currently not being met at zoning in its current combined group structure? Six, what are the potential additional opportunities available to students should the consolidation occur? What might students thought the district lose if consolidation were not? Seven, has the school board explored other viable options that do not involve closing elementary schools? For example, has the board a merger of not really Roxbury as a possible possibility? Eight, what does the research say about the potential impact for sending children to schools outside of their immediate communities versus the protective factors of keeping children within their own communities? Nine, given that equity is one of the core values of our district, how does stopping children from the Thank you, Nancy. Are there any other members in the public? Go ahead, Tim. I have a request that they use the microphone. Oh, sure. Yeah, here, here. Thank you. And if I can get somebody to come in to pass that around, please. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, I'm Sean from Waterhouse, and I'm from Worcester. And can someone move to be here on Megan's last board meeting and just want to say a few of her help to do for your vision? And doing really hard work. <laughs> and students. Um, um, so I live in Worcester. I wanted to, there are three things that I just think is really important that the board know. And you may already know this, but if you don't, it's important. So the first is that Worcester does not have declining student enrollment. We're the only town in the district that does not. We've had a stable student population for at least 25 years. That means that our school has developed a real specialization in multi-age um, education. Number two, pre-merger, um, I was on the board for seven years. Dodi had the lowest per people spending in the district for six out of those seven years. And the one year that we didn't, I think we're the second lowest. I'm not saying that was a good thing or a bad thing, but we were very cost efficient compared to the larger schools. Um, and number three, pre-merger, Dodi students, performed well academically compared to their peers. And most noteworthy to me when I was on the Education Quality Committee was that our kids who were eligible for free and reduced lunch and who were on IEPs performed um, well as well as or better than kids in similar circumstances in other towns. So what this says to me is this idea that the writing is on the wall for Dodi. I don't know what that writing is, and I don't know where that wall is. Because what Dodi has shown is that you can provide a great education in a very small school at a reasonable cost. Thank you so much for your work. I really appreciate and value all of you. I know you work really hard and I see you and I honor you. Any, any other community members before I move online? Rose? Um, my name is Rosemary Leach. I live in Worcester. Both of my children they went to school through sixth grade at Doty. I was a very active parent during that time. Um, and I worked at Bromley for six years and just recently left my sort of long term connection, everyday connection with the district. So I am mostly right now just wanting to bring attention to the fact that what I'm hearing a lot of talk about is cost savings, but in the Goals that I saw for reconfiguration. I don't think cost was one of the goals, cost it. So I'm just bringing that up as a confusion point, and that my understanding would be that most people in Worcester, the main thing that would ever make them consider closing W would be saving lots of money. And I just haven't heard that's even a goal here. So I just want to bring that to the light and say that I really, 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 really don't want. So we can close for all the reasons that everybody already said and many more. Thank you very much. Hi there. Hello, my name is Sarah Brown. Good morning. Um Matt, come my neck, everybody. Um, I got to talk with Floor earlier a little bit today, just kind of very serendipitously um, at Birch Grove and um <laughs> It was very helpful for me to kind of just hear the perspective, you know, from where the board is coming from as far as making decisions. And I think as a whole group here, you know, we're all sitting here in our red, you know, supporting our school that we love and, and we certainly do not want to see close. Um, and I just want to um, 
I guess speak to if we are really speaking on the community terms that it is not us versus them. Um, you know, we are here in support of our school and how much we value it for our children and our community. You know, I also have very strong feelings that I do not want to see our school closed, which is crucial to the hub of our community, especially for our most vulnerable, you know, town to, to keep those in our town. Um, thank you. <laughs> um, but I did just wanted to say just for the sake of the conversations moving forward that I think all of our goals here are for the betterment for our kids, you know, for our town, for our communities, and to make, make sure that we're not coming at this with, you know, that like combative kind of energy. Um, I'm really excited about whatever the future holds and being able to operate in such a way that we can create a new future with some of these really difficult decisions. I also would very much be in favor of exploring other creative options before we're just leaning hard into closing our schools. Um, I'm excited for the June 26th, everybody knows the part of the calendars um, meeting to explore what those other options could be as a community. Um, but again, doing so with respect and love and kindness um, and, and holding our students and our teammates and our communities as the highest goal and, and not that when somebody's winning and somebody's losing, but how can we all win together? Yeah. Okay, do we have any community members online? And then we are getting close to our, we still have about 10 minutes. Anyone else online? Okay. Deborah, can you introduce yourself? And you have two minutes. Yes. Thank you. Um, my name is Deborah Bloom, and I am a Worcester resident. I currently have two children at Doty, um, and they're in third and kindergarten. Um, I I had sent an email to the board um, in May, the end of May, on May thirtieth. And Floor, in your response to my email, which echoed um, many of the sentiments that the Worcester community referenced in their community letter, specifically in my request to slow down the timeline, you responded, as far as the timeline is concerned, we have all agreed on a timeline. We have made a commitment to our communities and most importantly, in order to best serve all capital, our students, as we start to budget, we need to keep ourselves within that time frame. I fear that the current options on the table will have the greatest long-term effects within the poorest communities of our district. And I respect that we need to think of all of our students. However, that is my concern, is, is that the two communities that could potentially be affected the greatest long-term are in fact two of our poorest communities. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. Any other community members? Okay, I don't see any other hands up online. A one last look at the room. I don't see any other hands up either. So we're we're gonna move into. I just wanted to finish my last question. Okay, go ahead. The last question is just: Does the board have any um, thoughts around what they would do if the um, if either Doty or Calis were, or sorry, Worcester Calis were to not pass um, a school closure? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I don't see any other questions. I, I we're going to move into our meeting, and I know how dissatisfying it is. The board is listening to all your questions. We are developing a frequently asked questions. We, the questions that we can't answer, we're going to write that there. We can't answer the questions. We're trying to develop a, a system so that you guys can be informed. Well, I think there is one person who does not raise their hand on Zoom. Oh, oh okay. Like, okay, go ahead. Is that you, Brenda? That's uh, Caitlin. Okay. Uh, okay, Caitlin, go ahead. Hi. Um, I am a Worcester resident and a current Doty parent of one child, two. Um, and I just wanted to add my voice to all the other members of our community that I feel this timeline is incredibly rushed uh, and not sufficient to discuss the immense impact 
that such a closure would have on our community, as well as our children who are currently enrolled in the school, let alone the future uh, children who are already living in this community who are below pre-K-3 age. Um, I would like to see much more opportunity for people to interact uh, with the board within this community, as well as within the Callis community, because like many, I'm not able to get there in time. Uh, and sometimes I have work commitments that do not allow me to speak at events such as this. I appreciate that you have allowed people to send in letters, uh, but you need to be in our communities much more to hear from all of our residents. Thank you. Thank you. Great. I think it's on now. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So thank you again. We're gonna move right into reviewing our communications plan. And I think we're gonna talk about some of this. Just hold on a minute. And I'm a, so if there's one thing, and this is from Megan's wisdom after we were talking about, it, and it's worth it to just say it right now, that we can aim for the September date. It doesn't have to be static. We can we can decide when we get there if we need to extend it. But for right now, for us to aim in that direction, it help us. So that you know, for rewording our answer to 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 that email, I just wanted to say that because that was one of the last comments, and I think it helps us sort of put it into perspective as as a group before we start discussions. So that's to what I was in terms of saying that. The timeline is there now, but it is, if we need more time, we can push for more time. Um, and Megan made a really good point at a previous meeting. Um, and so, uh, but I would hope everyone turns out to the community forums that we are going to be scheduling in each, in each community uh, and tell us your thoughts and also your concrete ideas. Okay. Okay. So in, just to explain again, we're not going to get in a back and forth with the public. We're going to get into the oops, erasing what I said. Yeah. We're going to get into the meeting uh, right now. Okay. So the next uh, note out of is we're going to move into board operations and the discussion and action is to review our communications plan. The configuration committee had the opportunity to meet before this uh, before this meeting, and we looked at a a rough draft of potential uh, ways to um, structure this this meeting. I'm going to try to summarize and then rely on the configuration committee to to help us. And nothing is on stone. We are here to brainstorm how to move forward. So I'm not going to go. I think I'm not going to go through the entire uh, document that we read there. But we're mostly trying to uh, center it on the on the thing. And simplify it. The idea, the goal of the public forum is to listen 70% of the time and share information less than 30% of the time. It, we have to come up with a goal as a committee, as a committee, as a board of what is our, uh, what are we going to focus on in this uh, community engagement exercise? And what we agreed on is that we want to listen. From the community and we're open to new ideas and then we're going to gather that data and break. there were some questions that we would put in a parking lot there's some questions that we're going to uh, be able to uh, that we're going to use and filter through the criteria that we already have but i'm going to back up a little bit so one part of what we're going to be discussing today is the goals the other part is is you know how we're going to structure the meeting so we said you know welcome and introductions and we spend that 10 15 minutes on that and then move right away into the interactive part of it which is so that we can hold space both to hear the concerns but also to hear creative ideas of how they envision the future of their communities and their school and then we have to figure out the third step is how to summarize the next steps right and how we're going to have a survey how um, how we're gonna how we're gonna use the information that we hear, and as I said before, we were thinking of running it. That's the part that I deleted. That running is through our criteria, and we talked a lot about that. Rather than changing the timeline, let's continue to anchor the timeline. We don't want to tie our hands. If, but September is just uh, something to aim to. And then uh, another part that came through that meeting also was, uh, again, the, a mechanism for collecting the data, but also develop a 
budget that is opportunistic for students. So as we're hearing about the community, it's also data that we would be we are committed to year round budgeting. So it's also important meetings for us to be gathering data for the community. I'm gonna open it up to some members of the configuration committee if I missed something and then we can Chris is your hand up already. Yeah. The goal um, of these forms is to um, have dialogue uh, with communities, not speak at you folks, but really have a true dialogue, which we, we don't have here generally, um, but to have ideas going back and forth, concerns, um, what your, your um, potential ideas for a different uh, structure could be. Um, but also with the idea that uh, we are facing very difficult economic time when we have declining student enrollments across the district as whole. Well. We are one district now uh, and uh, increasing expenses and it becomes difficult. Um, you know, combined with that, if we're reducing costs, um, you know, we have to really see, and you have two questions, what are the cost reductions? And we should be able to deliver, it, deliver that to you so that um, it, it makes sense. Um, if whatever option we end up choosing. But there is no option that is chosen. I want to assure you of that right now. Um, but we are really looking for a dialogue with very concrete ideas coming from our community and exploring those as well. Um, so you, I mean, so many Adobe folks sit here are engaged. I hope you stay engaged and, and show up. Okay, so now we, as, as a board, we can move to some of the action steps or concrete information of what you guys are looking, you know, how we organize this. So we uh, we said that we could preload some information that it would, we are through a world, or a world cafe is what we are agreeing on. We would preload some information that we would not preload, but have with us the, the criteria that we use as the configuration committee for for the options so that people are familiar with it, have the strategic plan, our core beliefs, uh, enrollment data, anything else that I'm missing. And don't get me wrong, we're working in that frequently asked questions. I'm, I'm gonna concentrate in the, in the goals of this particular forum. Natasha. Um, two questions, one, or I guess two statements. One, can you explain what World Cafe is so people know what you're yeah. talking about? Um, and two, when we talk about preloading, one of the comments that came from the community is that we have community members who cannot access anything electronically. I know we talked about putting stuff on tables. That's a lot to digest in the moment. Can we think about some other ways to get information available to community members in paper form outside of electronics so that they can look at it prior to the forums? I was jumping in with an answer and then you asked a slightly different question. <laughs> so forget that. Um, uh, I will explain loosely what the committee talked about in terms of the World Cafe. The question that you were talking about, one of the things that I was all, that also I think makes sense is um, we have some of previous presentations in multiple formats printed in PDFs, which I realize not everyone can access. We also have a video version of it, a clipped one and a one that includes the strategic plan. So we can also talk about how do we get those out. Um, again, that's only helpful if you have technology, but some people would rather actually just listen to it or whatever. So um, World Cafe, one of the things the committee just talked about is um, having some structure to the conversation makes it so that all the voices can be heard. So it isn't that we're trying to overstructure it, it's to make sure that when you show up, you actually can engage. So a World Cafe can look lots of different ways. If the group size is big enough, what it looks like is you've identified a list of questions and the questions are spread out usually among tables. Um, anyone who was at some of the early strategic planning meetings, this will sound familiar. Um, you sit at a table with a group of people, the groups, divide themselves up. You spend 10 minutes or so on that question as a group. You take notes, you discuss, and then after a certain amount of time, everyone gets up and moves to a new table. So your group changes and you also go to a new question. The, that's the general concept. Um, the committee also talked about, it depends a little bit on how many people come to your forum. I mean, those of us that were in, we were all divided up during the budget. And in some of those groups, it was, you know, a group size that actually 
actually just allowed you to talk through those questions just straight up. So I think there would be flexibility. I think the goal is for the board members facilitating to be prepped for either one. Because if you have 40 people, it's hard to hear everyone and make sure they all are able to participate. Um, and there's no reason to overly structure it if you're in a room of you know eight or 10. So that's what we talked about. Thank you. And the other thing we need to do is also divide ourselves up into groups and we could you know we could even do it it doesn't need to be the same groups that we were before it can be the same groups that that we were before but it, the idea being that there's different members from the board at each town so that we you know we all represent all of our towns so you know we could do three three i don't know three and three and just as we're saying <laughs> it, i wonder about uh, adding in a remote one so like having the you know the, the town, but then also one that's solely remote. Okay. Yeah, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. That is an option in our is that an option yeah. already. Yeah, it is an it is an option yeah. on the communication plan. Well, that because we um, we were gonna do something separate, but it, you know yeah, you hold it. we I could mean, hold it one separate. Yeah, within that same day. You're right. When we talked about it, we sort of talked about it as a separate yelling, but it, it could be something as you divide yourselves up, you add a sixth group and the sixth group facilitates the virtual meeting. The drawback is it won't be town by town. It would be merged. But but I would just offer it's much easier to be fully remote as the option than try to do hybrid. Hybrid yeah, yeah, yeah. is inevitably not going to work well for those in-person sessions. So I think it's a it's a good idea. It is part of the plan. What you're saying, which I think is a good suggestion, is let's do it all. So it's all the same night with folks who want to be online. Yeah. So we might want to divide in groups of two. So I'm going to let Zach, and then you can go. So I, I, I am just a little concerned about you know, how thin we're spreading the board yeah. if we start to have more groups. I think that's mm -hmm. with, with the level of engagement we're going to get, I you know I think as many board you know to have more board members in a single room and maybe do the, the virtual sessions on a different night might be beneficial. Or we could do it all at a different time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we could. I would actually suggest that we do a different night in case people can't make that night and that's why they're not able yeah. to come. And maybe they can't make any Tuesday or. So having it either the next night or in two days or something could be that's a good idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lisa? I was just trying to let you know because I haven't talked about that. Oh, oh, oh sorry. Yeah, I, I had you in my review sack. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. But I think oh I'm go ahead. Thank you. <laughs> um so what I'm thinking is too though is that it's more the structure. I think the number of it uh board members present, I don't think is going to be as critical as us understanding what the structure is and having it set up. And I think that will help lend itself to, you know, because I mean, who knows if you can all make that that night or whatever. But I'm just saying, I think we need to make sure we have a, a consistent firm structure so that then whoever's there can do it. Okay, everybody can make that night, right? Let's start there. Well, you guys are making right now. Yeah. Okay. Well, I can't. You can't. Okay. All right. Okay. Like on. Um, I would propose that, in the interest of um, fostering, I know we're I know we're all one community, one district. Um, but you know, some people are more familiar with the others based on where they live. I would propose that since they're members per town that there be two members from that town at each town and then a, a wild card member um, <laughs> yeah, I, I think we might end up being groups of two looking like so we might not you know, just looking at who can make it right so are you guys okay how do how do we want to divide ourselves it's one of the least of our problems as Getting the context and the and the questions is what we really need to do. Hey, Natasha. Um, I think it would be really important for both McKellen and I to be at the Worcester Forum. I'm just gonna put that out there. I understand that we split up like with the budget and different things, but I just think with this conversation, it's important for Worcester to see the people that are from Worcester at the front of the room 
of the episode in that conversation. Daniel? Oh, I was gonna um, just vocalize that I think we missed an opportunity to add to the agenda tonight, uh, an opportunity to recruit a third Worcester board member. Right. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, no, we still have plenty of Worcester members here. We can do it at the end, but. Okay. Um, and I also wanted to just, uh, for, for those who are listening tonight, emphasize that um, I, and I think probably everyone up here, um, we, like, for, for as many of us that there are, there are that many different sort of ways we're approaching this problem and struggling with this problem. And I think it's important to remember we're all members of these communities also. And I don't think any of us are intending to go into these forums with any kind of defensive posture. And um, not that uh, we don't expect critiques, we do expect critiques, but, you know, I think we're looking forward to exploring change and visualizing change if we show up. And it's not a, they're not mutually exclusive. I expect both to happen. But I do, I really do hope there's a lot of positivity. Uh, I said earlier in the uh, configuration committee that, oh, shoot. I have it. Do you want me to just read it? I don't remember what it was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Like we staffed, it was really great. <laughs> it was incredibly <laughs> profound. Right. <laughs> 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 how old are you? How old are you, Daniel? Not just kidding. Um, okay, I I really think that it's important for us, uh, and it would be important for the Worcester community to have <laughs> not just the Worcester representative that because what we need is for people to listen from from different towns. Uh, you guys are familiar, you're in constant communication with your community, you're in constant communication with your principal. I think it's important for other members of the board to be at the Worcester, in, in just so that they also get the perspective of the Worcester community. That, that would be my thought. Hey, Chris? Um, I'm wondering if we anticipate having multiple forms Yes. Over time. You're in the committee. Uh, and and uh, yeah, yeah, multiple forms over okay. time. But then, but then um, I think it would be helpful to combine them with towns. Um, so you have two towns at the same forum, mm -hmm. uh, just so mm -hmm. the, the participation you're hearing across pollination, uh, mm -hmm. town members are hearing directly from each other. Uh, and I would think that the, the because it would offer a different perspective, I think, from uh, from for what's in say middle sex to have the same type of form and participants uh from each community. Uh so at least that but that's further down the road. Okay. Um I I tend to think that um I think having uh the towns that are potentially most effective their board reps at that community forum would be very helpful because there's a familiarity that the community members have with those board members. It might be uh, more willing to be open, more open with them than they would others. I don't know. I mean, you, you sound like you're not a very cowed bunch uh, <laughs> here tonight, anyway. Uh, but it just, but you, you're here, um, and and I think you'll have much greater um, participation in form. So just in terms of uh, enabling greater discussion and maybe a greater breadth of discussion, folks. I think, and I, I don't see any harm. And maybe to mesh those ideas together, I think it's helpful to have the Worcester reps in Worcester, Cal's reps in Calus, and then an additional board member right. and stack the yeah. board members in those mm -hmm. towns. And then we get so if we have three in each of those towns, two in the other ones. I haven't done the math yet, so I'm not sure if that actually works, but I feel like it might. Yeah. I think Berlin, we haven't heard about Berlin yet, but I think we're going. Okay, so is that? This is also an element where there, there are two different questions, there are two different sets of issues. You know, there's this, if there's the issue that we have not spent as much time talking about as like of the other proposals on the table, you know, there, there's a real split between, you know, do, you know, if we worked, you know, without considering the option of, you know, also really transforming Berlin to be an early childhood you know, center and that, 
that has an impact on the entire district, has an impact on sort of how kids are getting bought for, for pre-K around the entire district. And so I think we need to at least not lose sight of that. Um, but then also have this, you know, this must be this big impact on schools that are potential, those towns that are potentially having schools closed in either scenario. And so I wonder if there needs to be almost like two set two sets of things to have to have a set to really focus on to focus on these questions about you know which, which option do we choose particularly with the early childhood issue, but then to also make sure that to, to have your know, extra meetings you know in the towns that are really that, that are looking at potentially closing schools so that, that that issue so that both issues get addressed. So just to clarify for right now, it's not because you you were pretty, you were not here for the configuration committee meeting. So we're right now we're just talking about this what the decision that the configuration committee made was that we needed more input from the community before we move into the simulations that we already have. So they, the community forum that we're gonna have right now is to be open to have a conversation and, and their individualized change together, is what Daniel said, and using the parameters that, that we have. So the, this forum in particular that we're having right now is to hear from the community, not to share the already uh, the, the simulations that we have before. Yeah. Right, so now we need a couple of questions. Go ahead. So my question is, as I'm looking at the uh, presentation that we had on April, in April, looking at the uh, priorities at a glance, is that the parameters that we're looking at, which had to do about optimal class size mm -hmm. uh, limits or eliminates partial FTE, full-time nurse slash counselor, opportunity for expanded offerings, potential cost savings and impl implications for further study. Are those the parameters yeah. that we're talking yeah. about? So yeah. those would be out there for people to brainstorm with. Correct. Yeah, and it's occurring to me as I'm hearing you read that and hearing other folks and just having you know read the feedback so there should be a table or a question or a prompt, depending on your group size and how you're organizing it, that says, these are the parameters we've um, identified. What else? Or we have to, right? So that's a question in and of itself, is the things that the board has identified, um, in addition to questions about, you know, what are different ways we could achieve these? And um, so I think you're, anyway, I'm just, it's just yes. occurring to me that I think that by itself is a question. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm typing. I can't hold the mic at the same time. So, uh, okay, that's one question. Keep thinking. What else? Sorry. What else? Go ahead. So, so what we're hearing is a reaction from you know. It's kind of like the uh, you know. Sometimes when you're trying to think of what you want, you think of what you don't want. Um, and so I wonder if, as part of these conversations have been coming up, is there, do we want to ask the question of what are people afraid they will lose? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or even just what are you afraid yeah. of? Yeah. yeah. And get more broad. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm just to pick it up, I actually think that maybe both of those are really important because what I've heard in emails and from comment public comments tonight is here are the things you say we might gain have we thought about things that we might lose mm -hmm. that have already been established in our community so i think having that lose part in there is also an important part of the conversation uh, part of the question not just what are you afraid of but like here are some things we really hold dear within our community that could potentially go away that we just want people to be aware of okay the, the way i'm um, sorry and that was not me phrasing a question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> then we're going to have taken a note before from when we were going through that it, it, um, format. We were saying provide a space for expressing concerns and discussing pot uh, the potential input. What are the fears is what I'm hearing right now. And you're saying let's change it a little bit. Fine. Go ahead. I kind of fill up both of those because you identified too, right? Like what? Like there was a, a very generic, what are we afraid of? And then like a, hey, what are you afraid of losing? Mm -hmm. Because people are identifying that. Um, is what if we had the, what are you afraid that would be lost as a question? And then another, 
question can be what concerns you have because it doesn't just have to be fears. Mm -hmm. It can yeah. just be it's concerns. Mm -hmm. And then it's we're not belaboring a fear point. And I just want to give people an opportunity who might not be seeing them as fears, but concerns. Okay. Yeah, I think that that's great. And I think the flip side of that question is probably what are your concerns with the status quo? So if nothing changes, what, what are your concerns? Since we're seeing, you know, FTE shaved down, like there's a reason that we're exploring these things and it's it's because of the past few budgeting processes. And so I think that that's helpful to just talk about as well. Thank you, Kelly. Okay, Daniel and then Chris. Uh, I'd like to have a, a question framed around the process and the timeline. And I'd like to understand what is substantively different with a longer timeline like what what does a longer timeline bring to the process that isn't provided for with a short timeline and also what are the what are the costs of a, of a longer timeline? i think there's a little bit but i'm sure there are other but ursula and then chris no chris had one of you um i don't also add in the word why the question why um, because you're going to articulate what you're afraid of or you're concerned about, but articulating why you're concerned about that um, can provide a lot of information. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing I would <laughs> pose for the question is um, if what would make a potential transition, however difficult it's going to be, easier for your community or your student? Because mm -hmm. um, that's down the road potentially, um, but knowing that now, um, or and what the community is looking for in in return, because if there's a closure, there's a sacrifice, an incredible sacrifice, and that 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 the community is being asked to make, and what should be provided in return. As I listen to everybody talk. Oh, we're sorry, sorry, sorry. 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 Um, in, it's sorry. sort of in the same vein, like we have you were asking, like, if nothing changes, what are your concerns? Um, I want to ask people to like dream big, like, if consolidation happened, what would you hope for the students? <clears throat> or what would you want for them? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Or I was really about what opportunities would, would they want to see for their children. I think that's a better word. Okay. Mm -hmm. And other hand. Yeah. Okay. So I think we have I think we have enough questions. For right now we would have to uh, well, sir, I narrow it down. Sorry, I am very visual, so it's hard for me to listen in now. Did someone say something about just like what are your other ideas? Mm -hmm. I wrote down. Yeah, yeah we yeah, okay. got from the floor. Yeah, what are you? Yeah, I, you know, encourage participants to share their dreams and ideas for the future of our schools. I, I was just going to suggest that we flow back to the group. This is a list of questions. I also, this is a long list. If you may want to. Um, or I have lots of tables and lots of, um, but anyway, I think we should put them back in front of you so that you all can decide for sure what you want them to look like. I agree. I think we need to narrow it down to potentially, you know, four or five questions. So otherwise, right, it would be right now. with my count. I don't know. Some of them could be chunked together though and be right. at the same table with like an yeah. overarching question and some sub questions. And That's true. I have two questions. Um, one is, and maybe this was discussed with the reconfiguration committee, it probably was sort of like a longer. Um, the first committee form will be June 26th. Do we have the other one scheduled yet? Not yet. Okay. And the first one is not to share simulations or data. So I'm wondering if, based on the letters and the comments that we've had, we could sort of 
categorize the concerns that we've already heard um, as a way of prepping for that community forum on the 26th and sort of have um, people, when people say their comment, we have a bit of a category to organize and um, to sort of stay in the spirit of staying with a data focused um, way of kind of synthesizing because there, there's definitely going to be a lot of emotion and and so to kind of stick with some of the data points that the community has shared, that's really kind of like what are cost savings, um, has taxes, what's the research say about busing children, you know, positive and negative impacts of that. And, you know, what's, what's there? So we just, just to sort of acknowledge like we have kind of the bare bones of a way to get started. And I, what I'm hearing you said, and after having this conversation with me, maybe besides having what we have, we have some chart paper that we bring where we have the yeah. parking lot questions and then just add to this parking lot, this yeah. parking lot subject questions that we already have. Yeah. So at the beginning, we, you know, maybe we start the meeting 15 minutes before so people have time to put stuff there and at the end of the meeting provide another 15 minutes and then we can put all of those questions in together or maybe they see a question there that is already there and it's just an idea. Does that I'm make sense? Imagining that some of the alternatives that people may have will be contingent upon what we come back with. Right? Like we come back with some data and research and maybe maybe that changes the course of the conversation. Change the course of the conversation later where people might actually say, oh based on the data that's actually we want to do this now, or we want to do this, but we want to modify it in this way. Or, yeah. okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think what I heard in our meeting before this was that there's going to be uh, soon a frequently asked question yes. resource online, I'm assuming, um, where there are those questions and then like, we don't have the answer, but we will in August or here's the answer or yeah. we'll never have the answer <laughs> or whatever. Um, and that will not be started by June 26th or possibly started. That has been started already. That, has been started. That, that is started. And I and I are looking at it right now. There's more questions that have come in in this past week, as you said, we, yeah, I know have been pretty it would be great if it could be like a living document so that there's something that exists for the public to see and then it's added to as questions. Yeah, and then we also talk about having a table of the questions that we're not able to answer yet, right? right? Which is yeah. a different format mm -hmm. than, than the questions and the frequently asked questions in, in my mind. Okay. Okay. And Jill, one more question. Yeah. Um, in terms of structure, then, since the first community forum is about getting more ideas and hearing more um, from our communities. I am wondering about how we're looking at streams of like answers on the two proposals that had originally come out versus having like an open community forum. I, I, I don't want to tarnish the open community forum with answers to the other proposal questions, but I can also see that being really dissatisfying to people who are kind of, you know, like a lot of the questions are around that, obviously. And so it's like not addressing the elephant in the room. So I just want us to think about that. Maybe that's online or there are sheets and that's free, that's like the free load, but then we just discuss with an open mind. I um, my observation actually is that the board's purpose for the 26th has pivoted somewhat so that the goal actually isn't to spend much time on those simulations. Right. The question that I'm having that actually also came up, but never, you never really circle back to it is your, you in the normal cycle of a board function, you, this is your last meeting and you reconvene at your retreat and your committees tend not to meet. I think you're going to need to have a conversation about circling back together. You you need to decide is that your full board or your committee, 
And how frequently is that? Because I think the place to have, okay, now, either those are still the two most viable options or some more were surfaced or both, but you're gonna have, some yeah. group is gonna have to sit down and say that, and then there will be the need to turn back around. So um, I don't know that you have to get that far down for the 26, but you are gonna need to be prepped for Here's how this board is going to engage, um, or the committee. I mean, mm -hmm. that that is up to you, Daniel. I was thinking along the same lines, Megan, and I was thinking that uh, maybe after the after the community forums, the configuration committee get back together and sort of based on a, a debrief, create a rubric for. Um, or like a preliminary evaluation of any new ideas that surface, you know, are they within the realm of possibility? Like, would a reasonable person reasonably expect like positive education outcomes coming out of that? Like, do they do they move the needle in the ways that are on the parameters that we're that we're focused on? And then whatever whatever does rise to the top, then we ask <laughs> we ask. Uh, the administration to, to do their best to model that as well. Like whether it's like a Sorry. standalone alternative or whether it's uh, sort of um, improving on our current. I like the idea of a rubric, and I think it's important to have it available before um, mm -hmm. getting these ideas because it's a little. Um, because otherwise, um, people, you know, you wouldn't grade a student um, with a rubric that they hadn't seen before the assignment. I think it would be helpful in the community discussion to know what kind of grading we were, and maybe it's those parameters. I think it's important to say the parameters, the parameters, the parameters, the specific plan, our core beliefs are what we would be using in the community forum. Right, but a rubric should be pretty specific. So. Hey, Daniel, I'm saying that that check is like, I think the one obvious parameter, which is finances, to add to like what the ones we've already articulated. And I also think like dwelling too much on a rubric in advance is going to have sort of like a, a chilling and mm -hmm. straight jacketing effect uh, on, on the conversation. Mm -hmm. I mean, who knows where it's going to go? But I, I guess I would prefer not to have a rubric. Like too explicit. Thank you, Daniel, Natasha, and then with Michael and hold on, hold on your, hold on your side, Natasha, and then Ursula, and then Michael and if you like, and you can go. Um, so a couple things. One, um, we have stated in our parameters that budget was not one of them. So now to say that finances are one of the big ones is a conflicting message. Um, and if the question is dream big and tell us what you would love to see, you can't do that if finances are one of the parameters, um, which I think has actually been part of the, for me, part of the issue since the beginning that this has been housed in finance because I don't think you can move vision if something is housed in finance. But um, so I think that we, if we're asking the community to give us ideas, I, I think there has to be something a little bit more tangible than just the parameters, um, because I think even the parameters are kind of nebulous. Um, and I, I don't know that they, I mean, I love the question of are these the right parameters, because I don't think they are. I think there's other things that we need to be, we need to be thinking about that aren't part of those. Um, so, you know, maybe not necessarily a rubric, but I think that it would be nice to give the community something a little bit more concrete. And then my other piece that I want to hear everything that the community has to say, and I also think it's kind of a hard ask for us to put on the community. What do you think is a really good idea <laughs> to have our schools look like? We don't ask our community to come up with a budget and say this is what our budget is supposed to look like. We entrust that there are people in our district who have done that. Um, and so I want to, like, believe me, <laughs> I want to hear all the ideas, um, but it also just sort of feels like we came up with some and you didn't like it, so now what do you want to do? 
um, th that's that's how it feels to me. Um, so I'm just putting that out there um, because I, I want whatever this process to be, to be a very genuine process where when we get the information back, we are truly engaging and looking at these ideas as critically and thoughtfully as we looked at consolidation and closing of buildings. Um, and that is my fear, but that's not gonna happen. So I don't wanna ask the community to go through a process and then that really is not going to be given the same consideration or truly inform any decisions that we are putting forward as a board. Well, I'm just thinking, is there, so Danielle, you're talking about giving the board a tool to be able to vet ideas that come out. And I think the committee has been really solid about wanting to ask for ideas and also affirm and, and explore the um, parameters. So you, when you looked at the presentation before, it, it's not written like a rubric, but it kind of is. You saw each model, did it check the box for our class size, FTE, nurse counselor, expanded offering, and frankly, potential cost savings is on here. Um, it's near right, it's not listed in the list of priorities, but it, it is on the tool that you all used. You could take that, you could leave space in it as a committee, to, to add parameters to it based on the input. Um, so what you're putting in front of the community is very transparent. These are the things we thought were really important. We've asked you for what else is really important and we're gonna look at all of those things as a configuration committee. I think you could give the um, folks at the, at the input session some insight on the rubric without doing a ton of work because you've already kind of developed this. You already know you have a question for what is missing on this list. So I think you actually already have the mechanics to do that. It gives some structure to the, the conversation the configuration committee will have while still being open to other brainstorms. Um, and I think that's what you want, frankly, is a balance of structure and openness. Mm -hmm. All open is going to be hard to wrap your hands around and all structure is, is going to limit brainstorming. Um, so I think you I think you have the pieces for what you're looking for. I really like that idea, and I just wanted to say that as we potentially use that and we get a list of parameters, some of the suggestions might be categorized as parameters so that it requires much. What is that? Yeah. Anyway, how is that? We, we have other work to do as a board, and I don't want to like finish finish this conversation either because that would be work, but uh, would the board be comfortable with the, uh, either the steering committee or the big configuration committee, obviously, with the uh, people that volunteer to do the, the forms uh, working on the last phase of logistics? Because we, we have right now big questions. We, we would still have some prep to do, make sure that we have documents, so there's still be some work that we can uh, accomplish uh, tonight, right? So, and the other question is, if, can you just raise your hand if you're going to be here so that- For the 26th. For the 26th. So, okay, so, okay, everybody, so just that. that. And we're missing two members, right? Uh, it, yeah, and Patrick, that Greg is, is traveling. I don't know if he will be back. Okay. I'll try to get Jonathan and see if he can, if he can make it. Okay, so, and then we'll work depending on how many board members we have. We'll do our best to make sure that we have two of the town in at that meeting. If we don't have enough people, we're gonna have to be flexible. The way that we've been doing this is the members of the steering committee that were Present that town are at, at, at their town that can also, uh, but for now we we will work with that. Is that okay? That's how we were doing that before. Okay, exactly. So yeah. Daniel, so Daniel, you would be in college, right? And then we will work a team around you. You were not able to be at the other one, so Michelle, the Prince of Calais, uh, McKaylin is. And Dodie, we will do our best so that both of you are there. Um, 
we're still at Middlesex and we'll figure out that team. And uh, uh, Diane is Berlin. And you had stepped in the last time because you can be here. And then we will move the value around there. And I'm in Montpelier and we will. Be that, does that make sense? Okay. Okay. And you were there when we made the decision. On you teams. were there. Okay. Yeah. You were there for the meeting. You were there for the meeting. You were just not able to be yeah. at the other meeting. But no, you were okay. at the other meeting. I, I came to one Oh, that's true. You were at the meeting. That's true. That's good. Good reminder. Okay. So I'm asking. Uh, I, I mean, you can't. I, I'm sorry. Not it. The, the meeting. I know that, and I told you from the very beginning, it's very satisfying. But it, we can connect at the end of the meeting, and there's room for public comment at the end of the meeting. Yeah. Okay. So let's move into the. I'm sorry, more quick question. So the steering committee will come together to finish the logistics. Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm thinking. That would be the. Appropriate venue for yeah. for that to happen. Does that make sense? It has a presentation of the five towns, and yeah. we can, and then we we will hopefully it's not going to be. I, I'll just be, uh, you know, emailing you guys to come up with with the day to do the work between now and yeah, week. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, well, not next week, the week after. Yeah. And okay. And having said that, no work is Thursday and Friday at least. Mm -hmm. Or, or on my behalf, I have a graduate this year, and I don't have to like have one day. <laughs> so we'll schedule next week. Yes. I, I remembered what I said in the committee. That was what I read. You should get a mic for that. No. I was just going to say that I think it's important to remember that it's in everyone's interest for the best options to be on the table in November or whenever we're voting. And so just like full throated engagement from everyone, it's gonna result in the best outcome, I think, in terms of alternatives on the table. And so whether you feel like you're absolutely gonna vote against closure of your school in your town or not, uh, you know, reserve that right. And in the meantime, work to make the alternative on the table the best alternative. Thank you. Thank you. I think we can all agree on that. Uh, so we are students. We we kept our student report, which will thinking uh, our student will is in the Boston trip, and uh, now I forget. Uh, I want to report out on some student stuff. Uh, sure. Okay. <laughs> Um, so I just wanted to report out on the middle school track and field team. They went to state championships. We sent 15 students, six girls and nine boys. Um, we had eight personal records that were um, made that day. Ryan Parker finished eighth in Javelin. They, they awarded top eight places for individuals and top three for relays. So Ryan Parker got eighth in javelin, Inigo Farr got fourth in shot and sixth in discus, Adeline Ryan got seventh in high jump, Adeline Gould tied for eighth in long jump, and our four by one relay got first in the state. Yeah. Out of all the stress, they ran three seconds faster than they've ever run. Um, and I just like, I'm so proud. <laughs> of, I think we have about 50 kids come out for track and field and they were amazing. They showed amazing sportsmanship on and off the track. Anytime we asked them to try something new, they did. Every single meet, our kids just put everything out there and showed improvement and had each other's backs. And I just can't speak enough to how amazing our middle school track and field athletes are. And I just want to give them as much attention as high school athletes get. So. <laughs> I would just also say kudos to Natasha for taking on middle school track. <laughs> I don't know if I'll do it. No, it will be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good we, we have the waiver, so you're in. I know, I know. I've <laughs> been forever now, right? Yeah. <laughs> Um, I, I was wondering if you wanted to report in the word ceremony last night in, in um, La Crosse or so, Well, yes. Yeah, so we, we had lots going on, obviously, here at the end of the year. Um, so we had our senior awards uh, ceremony was on Sunday. Um, we had our high school awards ceremony this morning. Um, 
and uh, move up days today. So this was when we got our new uh, incoming seventh graders were here uh, to see their cores and their classes and to see all the other kids. We also call it Unity Day because we bring the kids together um, to uh, and to meet each other. Really, is the big thing, and it's led by our upperclassmen. And so it's a really neat uh, uh, moment mm -hmm. time for us. Um, we also had our sports banquet last night. And we have one team, um, the girls uh, lacrosse will be playing on Saturday, we believe at 4.30 over at Norwich for the state championship. So they're they're uh, back to back um, at, in the state championship game that won last year, good chance this year. And so we're, we're looking forward to that. Um, and we have graduation on Friday. And I know that some of you are going to be able to attend that with us. We really appreciate that. Um, so a lot, a lot going on right now in the school. I was going to mention also that last Friday was the art show, and there's the uh, opportunity after yeah. this meeting to peruse the art in the atrium. <laughs> yeah, sorry to miss that, but we yeah, <laughs> uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Okay, anything, anything else? Otherwise, we have the superintendent of Central Office. Or is there anything you'd like to highlight? Um, well, in highlighting, and I'm putting my team on the spot because we normally would have had our um, meeting. So, Heidi, I'm completely putting you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there's a little bit of an update in here around just some of the work Heidi's been doing around um, recruitment, diversifying our workforce, retention. Um, and I, I, my editorial aside is... Um, Heidi's made an incredible amount of difference to our system in a very short period of time, and we're very grateful for that. But I didn't know if you wanted to add anything about the the cohort you're part of or anything like that. Um, it, it does mention it in the report, but the um, great great school partnership has been a good resource for for me and raised my gifts back to the district and being on the agency of education. Um, Group that is looking at the criteria for the district quality students forward. Thank you, Heidi, especially because I didn't ask you first. Mm -hmm. um, so, the only other thing I would highlight, and then obviously, if you have questions, um, there is a little bit of a report in here. As you know, we are playing catch up with updating procedures in the system um, and fulfilling our responsibility to report to you about procedures. So. Uh, in here is a little summary of what you saw last year, what you saw this year, um, and we are continuing to work on that. Um, I think that we we have checked almost all of the boxes about things that are required by policy to report to you, which is a good win. Um, but your you know part of what you do is hear from us about how we um, operationalize your policies, and so we'll continue with that cycle. And happy to answer questions. <laughs> Any questions from board members? Daniel. Oh, Daniel, go ahead. I was, um, I'm, I'm gonna, this is a question about the mechanics of it. So there's a, there's the references. These are the procedures presented to the board during the school years. There's a link to the to our policies. Are the, is there a place where we can read the procedure? No, not yet. Yes, but that's a really good question. So um, one of, I don't even know if this is on. One of the things that we need to do is, is create a mechanism for procedures to be posted probably on the website somewhat alongside your policy. Not every procedure we have is driven by a policy. Some of them are just administrative, um, but no, and that's why they're not linked. Really what this is referencing is if you go back to the meeting in April, you'll find the report in the call report. Not the best way to do it, so yes. Um, so thanks for asking it because that's not done yet, and that's something that we need to do. Basically, we need to publish our procedures manual. So thanks. Any other questions? Just thank you for the vote report. It's really helpful and informative to all of us. Well, back into the Dover Montpelier uh, Center. Uh, we had a, a Patrick is another representative. He's uh, going to go to the next uh, board meeting. We did have a meeting of the what we call the facilities committee at the Career Center. Stephen was there. 
uh, to the, we had included in our, in the previous update, uh, a little link to a video and some information on the divisioning uh, process that the Career Center is going through. It, Jody also sent uh, a letter, I think it was today or yesterday, just to remind us about, you know, having an open mind about thinking about regional uh, career centers and regional, regional high schools. It, there's a lot of work it, that can stop in order to give our kids what they need. And it's in parallel of all of the other efforts that we're doing across the, the state. If the career center graduation, I'm not in that. We, when is the career center graduation? It's coming up today. Was it? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Come on. Oh, sure. Okay, well, I should have looked at it. Uh, yeah. What is it? Yeah, tomorrow. Tomorrow, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So if you guys want to attend, it's always a great ceremony and they do a great job about highlighting all the work that, that they do. Uh, the configuration committee update, uh, because of time, you guys just heard what we talked, we, what we discussed is what the configuration committee talked, so I didn't take the time to do three bullet points after that meeting. Everybody okay with that? Uh, uh, now, Education Quality Committee update, first left. So included in our packet was the memo that went to the Ed, Ed Quality Committee for our June meeting, which we have at the end of May, because it allows us to have our leadership retreat with the board. So we looked at, or we discussed our calendar for next year and our work plan for next year, which now has some equity indicators in it because equity indicators are coming our way as part of our review. And we do a lot of it as the committee. Our committee reviews math and literacy. And so adding in the information on that grade three reading, grade, you know, grade eight algebra skills, um, our post-secondary outcomes, those are all equity indicators that we have, and they are part of our reports. We talked about how we're going to rotate in social emotional learning and those equity indicators. And we did discuss that we have a monitoring cycle and we followed our monitoring cycle within the committee. This year, we were trying to develop a reporting out to the board method because part of our monitoring calendar includes four reports to the board. The board has received one this year. So it is a work in progress still. Um, they got the very first um, winter, no, nope. spring. So it would have been previous years, spring literacy and math data at the beginning of the year in like November. A few things happened this year that pulled attention away. And part of it being that we didn't have a calendar. When we decided on these recordings, we didn't have a calendar for when we would report out and how that worked with our review cycle. So this year we did look at how will we report out and when. So our hopes for next year will be all of the reports. <laughs> Thank you for all that work on the quality committee. Are there any questions? Being known, I believe the next one is the VSBA update. So I just wanted to remind board members to read their updates from the Vermont School Boards Association. You all get them. There's an action alert right now. Please write to your representatives. It's important that they hear from us on the EO bill. Without an EO bill, I link to the community and to you guys, the Joint Fiscal Office a link of what the implications are. I also am Sue has sent to all of the lawyers working on education law, included, including our both uh, Bernie and Scott Cameron, uh, updates on the open meeting law. We're going to use our time at our retreat to learn uh, what those changes, what those changes are. They're also on your June 4th uh, update from, from the school boards. There's still some uh, confusion about about them. So they're working both with the Secretary of State, uh, Vermont Super Station, and the local location lawyers in, in what would be the best way to inform all boards so that we make sure that we're complying. Really care about that. Hey, Megan? And Superintendent of Station too. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. I actually just wanted to put a plug back on the legislative um, action. 
um, only because it actually came up during the discussion tonight. So the yield bill that was vetoed has a blue ribbon commission to study the future of education in a really deep and thorough way. And if the you, if the veto is not overturned, then there is some question as to whether or not that committee will exist. And so a couple people have said that's a really important thing. I agree. Um, so just a just an added plug for um, contacting your legislators about the override. And Megan is in that committee. Not by me, but if everybody Which is the only everybody wants to, but no, no, but I, that's mm -hmm. one reason that you should mm -hmm. write for your request. Okay. Yeah. Now let's move into the finance uh, committee. Um, Susanna, uh, we have more. <laughs> the, I was missing you up here, but currently financial update. Uh, you sent an update just today. So yeah. you want to just highlight a yeah. couple of things from that? Yeah. Uh, so we came into the year with a, a fund balance of $2.7 million. And we're projecting that we will increase that fund balance a little bit by uh, $7,734, which is actually more than we had intended. Uh, because we uh, we the, the board voted to uh, spend sixty I think two thousand dollars for Great Schools Partnership to come and do some work with all of you on the strategic plan. So we'd actually uh, thought that we would have been in the you know negative the sixty two thousand dollars, and so it's actually sixty nine thousand dollars better than projected. Um, the total unassigned unallocated fund balance is anticipated to be about $1.5 million. And after the $485,291 being used to offset the FY25 budget, there's a projected $740,912 fund balance above and beyond the 2% the target. 7000 sorry. $740,000. $921. Any questions for Suzanne? So, Suzanne, can you just say what the total fund balance will be when you include, include the two? Yes. Thank you. Total unassigned, unallocated fund balance is $1.5 million. After the $778,000 that we set aside for a 2% reserve, there's $740,912. And so this is inaccurate? So the one in the printed packet is inaccurate. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I wasn't sure if that was the correct. This was correct. Yeah, and yeah, what I'm reporting is the correct thing. Yeah. And Melissa will update the packet that's on the website. So, but yeah, what yeah. Suzanne emailed you know, does not match what's in your packet. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And the email just went this afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. Because right. mm -hmm. the finance committee met this morning before the consideration <laughs> finance committee. So, <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, then, uh, our revenue anticipation note. Page 19. Daniel. Uh, I move that the board approve the revenue anticipation note for an amount not to exceed $2,938,750, an investment bid with Union Bank and authorize the board chair, board clerk, and district treasurer to sign the necessary loan documents. That means you too, Daniel, uh, to be available. Okay. Second by Zach. Any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carried. Okay, a word of wood chip and the wood pellet bit. We have a motion. Or sorry. I move, oh, sorry. I move the board and award the bit to supply and deliver wood chips for the WCUSD for the fiscal year 2024-25. And also that the board award the bid to supply and deliver wood pellets for WCU SD for the fiscal year 
2024-25 to Vermont Renewable Fuels for $295 per ton. A second by Ursula. Any questions? What was add today at the finance committee so that you know and there was a two dollar difference between last year. So it was, if I'm not wrong, it was seventy two dollars on uh, for this year and what for wood chips yeah. for wood chips and and for the other one it was similar to many. It was three each year for the wood okay, yeah. So that one up ten dollars, but both of those amounts are within the budget that or within the number that I used to budget. So all those in favor of the thing by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Hearing none, the motion carried. Okay. It's moving on. Oh, that was one more. Yeah, go ahead, Ursula. I move that the yeah. board authorize the superintendent to award bids for propane and number two fuel oil on behalf of Washington Central Union Unified Union School District for fiscal year 2024-2025. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ursula. Thank you, Daniel. Any questions? Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Opposed? The motion carried. Okay. So, um, like this is the time of year, as you know, where it changes daily. So, this is the new, new summary sheet and some new documents. From what you have in your packet. I'm going to wait until we get to everybody and then. Did I hand too many to the side? Yes. I didn't. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So I'm looking for a motion for new hire nominations. Who's left? Sorry, I, just... I move that we accept the new hire nominations for the 2024-2025 school year for Amy Conan-Bauer, U32 pilot program, Anna Garrison, U32 social studies teacher, Kat Fair, U32 assistant principal for special education. Second. Thank you, Ursula. Thank you, Kelly. Any other question? Any discussion? Yes. So, <laughs> so the cat fair one obviously is is um, and I guess I didn't know that was is that position. What is that an existing position? Right. Is that? Yep. Stephen, you want to? Yep. So okay. that is um, so you you'll see it a little further in your piece the um, resignation of Julia. Right. So. That she can assume the role over at Central Office as our director of uh, special services, and um, and so to fill that position, um, we went through a search process that identified Kat as our um, candidate for that position. The title has changed slightly, um, but it still is um, going to have some of the same responsibilities. So we now have okay. to find the principal for Ellis. Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the timeline for that? <laughs> so I will be meeting with the staff tomorrow. Megan won't be able to be there because of a uh, uh, lacrosse match. Yes. Yes. yes, so that's fine. Um, so I'll be meeting with the staff tomorrow afternoon to start uh, getting some feedback from them uh, about what they're looking for, what they're hoping for. We're obviously late in the um, hiring process, so our options will be a little more limited. Um, but we are going to uh, do a full posting um, and we're going to solicit um, you know, the best candidate that we can for the position. Um, yeah, and just to add to that, you're not, you are, you have had late hires before. This is especially late. Um, so typically what we would do, and we will start this communication with Cala's staff. Kat has been talking to folks on her own in her building so that they are aware. Um, and the, what they will hear from us is here are our options generally this time of year. First of all, the position will be posted and that is that is the best and first option. And at this time of year, if there aren't suitable candidates, the things that the, that we would be considering are interim for one year um, and then other potential uh, backup plans if we don't have a suitable hire. So they'll kind of hear that from us. This is an opportunity for us to hear from Cal staff. What is it they're looking for? 
Um, and then we penciled in an opportunity to do that with Callis families um, in pretty short order as folks will leave. Um, so, you know, this is, it is difficult and it, it is not a bad thing in a district when folks want to move around within the system. And, um, you know, Kat raised her hand as a candidate and went through the process. And um, I think it's really exciting for you, 32. We are not naive to the impact it has in Calus, but we don't, we don't want to make a hiring decision and take away a potential hire because of the impact on where they leave. That's how we feel about folks internal to the system wanting to move around. Have we looked at the feasibility of a shared position? All of those things are absolutely on the table as sort of like plan B. We don't, we also want people to know, and we're going to post the position as is and try because it's especially important right now to make people understand that we're still going to try that. But absolutely, all of those different configurations are possibilities. I think we need to vocalize that we understand that the configuration study certainly plays into the to what we're looking at for the school, but we also do not want to do anything that makes it look like we are creating an issue at Callis in order to reconfigure or configure differently. So we want to be we want to be clear that that exists, um, you know, if we're having this conversation, but we also don't want to create a situation where it looks like we're trying to force a decision as a result. Of this. Well, actually, to the contrary, though, I was thinking that that's, you know, potentially an interesting budgetary way to approach feasibility of keeping people mm -hmm. and dating them. It's called taking advantage of attrition, too. I mean, that is what right. the responsible thing to do whenever you have a late change is to say what's the best way to do that. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. <laughs> Daniel? Sure. Um, I was curious if it had been discussed and ruled out or whether it was still on the table uh, to request that Kat stay where she, where she is until a suitable new hire. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm curious, and, and maybe part of this question is, what's the administration's view on which school can, can best afford to not have the leader in place that particular leader in place. Yeah, I'd answer it this way. First, the advantage of internal hires is you have built-in transition, and Kat is absolutely committed to making sure Callis is in a good place before she transitions. She's joining a leadership team, not, not a single um, space. Um, and so I, while I wouldn't be able to say right now exactly what that transition plan is. That was one of the first things that Kat shared when she was offered this position is how do I make sure that Callis is in a good place? And what I would say to that second piece, um, of course we have a decision in a consolidated system about where do you distribute the resource that is most in need. Um, but again, I would just reiterate, when someone is the best candidate for a job, we don't want the job they leave to be the reason why they can't take this new opportunity. So it's a balance. But I can tell you that Kat is very committed to making sure that we're in a good place and she's not going far, which is the other advantage to being an internal hire. She's going far, but she's going far. No pun intended, but I'm glad I made it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so I, I don't think Daniel's question was really answered as to whether Kat is staying in a position in Calus until we have a review. I would say I don't know the answer to that. No, I mean, it, she'll receive a contract for assistant principal as of July 1, at mm -hmm. least based on the current. Well, the current we'll thing. see you in just a moment. Correct. <laughs> um, yes. Thank you. Um, I, and I would also say that um, for her work at Calus, as she'll finish out this month there, and yeah. then the, the new because of the new budgetary contract, she would not have worked in the month of July, right. um, more than maybe one or two days. And so- The uh, that position was reduced in the budget. Yeah, so so we already had some uh, built-in time here. Our goal is to certainly have somebody in place um, this summer. Um, okay, I'm just, I'm just saying, but is there any sense that we could condition yes on waiting till we actually have someone in place? Your job is to go up or down on the candidate that we're bringing. Our job is to make sure that uh, there's a senior, uh, a seamless transition. So in other words, the board can't statutorily put a parameter on the hire. You could vote down the hire, but that would be your only mechanism to do that. 
like my job is to bring the board administrative candidates. Your job is to say yes or no. Okay. Um, okay. 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 It's not, it doesn't have her name on it, it doesn't have her salary on it, it doesn't have any of that in the range. So the nomination form has changed as part of our update of our That's hiring the procedures. The one has, is a, is a feature nomination form. Mm -hmm. There's her name, not even on it. That's very good. Is there a question like, like what? Well, I'm just, I'm just pointing it out. It's wasn't public information if anybody should have added. There's two oh. sections missing. The, yeah. the candidate recommended to superintendent and the salary information is missing right. from Pat's. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows it was Pat except for her yeah. on the front page. It's quite frankly because this happened today in terms of the filling out of the nomination form in order to get it in front of you. It's a it's an error. We can certainly give the board the updated. Um, um, but it will become public. What's that? It will be public. It is public. It, it, is, no. it would be updated in the packet. The packet has to be updated anyway because this wasn't in the packet on the website. If the public were to go right now to the website, it's still within it. So, yes, yeah, so when we put it in the packet, yeah. it will be the updated one. Yep. Um, is the, my question is, is the is the U32 pilot program a year to year? I'm just wondering why she's getting a new contract if she's already currently in that position. I believe to get you more detail, I would have to answer that question in the executive session. Okay. Okay, so that, that was going to be my question. Why would you be hiring someone who's currently in the tradition as a new hire? So we can get that information. Okay. We would have to go to the executive okay. session. Yep. So if we have to get that executive session, can we hold off and pull that one out? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think you actually, since you have a motion on the table, I probably have to amend it. I will. Yeah, what? <laughs> yeah, we're going to take another question. Yeah, yeah. there was another question before. Oh, just to make sure that. Yeah, I just wanted to say that as a callous parent and an administrator myself, I think Kat has done a tremendous job. Yeah. And, oh, totally. and it's a little bit jarring. Um, and I think that what will be really, really important for us all to consider is that this is an important year for our district and for our very little school. Mm -hmm. And I think those two pieces without having a leader going in mm -hmm. to the school year is a little bit like, ooh, okay. Um, and so I do hope that there will be ample opportunities for our community to express what they're feeling, what they're thinking, similar to the configuration, um, I think it's really, really important you listen to Callis. Uh, and I, I just want to say that on behalf of the Callis parents that love Kat and love the work that she's done there. Okay, so we're gonna... I'm, I'm going to take a friendly amendment to my motion and remove the voting power from this motion. And I'm going to ask a curious question. Mm -hmm. With this vote change, if, do you are you having a request for information that we can receive in an executive session? I'm just I'm I'm just checking. Do you is your vote going to change with that? If you're just asking a clarifying, are you not able to vote? Um, I'm I, not able to. I want to I want to know why why we're doing this. It's not it's a, I don't think I've ever seen this mechanism before. Would it be out of order to? Quickly pop into executive session. No, you can yeah. by a by a vote of the board. You can choose to go in for purposes. Of the no, no, we, 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 we can do that, but we had promised. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. We had promised the committee that before we went into any executive session, we will listen to the community first. So let table this. Table table this. We want to table the whole whole slate. That no, just the amendment first. Just the okay. amendment. You can still take action on this hire when yeah. you come back out. Okay. Yeah. Well, so yeah. it, it's not, you're not missing your opportunity yeah. to take action. I'm amending the table, the one employee. Okay. Yeah. So you, you're the pilot program. Uh, so you're amending then, your motion. I'm amending my motion to be for Anna Garrison, U32 Social Studies, and Kat Ferry, U32 List to control for special education. Okay. And then, uh, and, uh, and then, Kelly, are you okay with that? 
Yes. Okay. Great. Right. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Uh, moving into the resignation. I move to accept the resignation of Kevin Richards and Sue Victor. Okay. Second. Okay. Thank you, Natasha. So, Michelle and Natasha, any discussion? Can I see a question? Yes. Um, shouldn't Kat be under resignation for the principal of Alex? Her, her contract was uh, was this was the end of her contract period, so she does not have a contract Thank for you. next year for Callis. Thank you. And she doesn't want to resign until you officially hire her for a new job. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries. Okay, uh, approve the minutes. If we do this fast, we can. Can I have a motion to approve the minutes? That we approve the minutes of May 22nd, 2024. All right. A, a second? Okay. Any discussion? I wasn't here. Sorry. Are you listed as the? I was at the second. I was and the I was the spirit. Spirit. Just, just hold it a minute. If you, I just want to clarify, especially for our new board members, even if you were not at a meeting but you read the minutes and you feel like the minutes are correct, you can always vote. <laughs> and I think she's saying that. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. I got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. So, amendment made. Excuse sorry. me. You said I, I said anything right here. Like, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All those in favor of the minutes as amended, please yep. signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The minutes have uh, the board orders have been circulating. Hopefully, I don't know if they went everybody has had a chance to sign them. I'm looking for a motion uh, to approve the board orders. Who's going to volunteer? Ursula. I move that we approve the board orders for May 16th through June 12th, 2024, in the total amount of $884,233.59. Second. Okay. okay. Moved by Ursula, second by Chris. Any questions? Any discussion? Being none, all those in favor of the board of the board orders as submitted to signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries. Uh, the next thing is our future agenda items. Uh, typically, this is our last meeting for the summer, and we typically take the light off. Uh, but as you know, we have work to do this summer. Uh, we're going to be scheduling a complete uh, steering committee meeting. But the most important question I had for you guys is the retreat time. The retreat is booked in your uh, calendar, as it says August 8th, kind of all day. So I wanted to confirm, and Stephen, you're here, so you got an opinion on this too. Uh, August 8th is the, is the retreat. We need to figure out the timing. Uh, Melissa and I were trying to book a place uh, today. And uh, and I want to just make sure that we have the timing is okay with everybody. We were hoping to do what we've done in the past, which is like nine to three, as opposed to doing a mini. But um, it's your decision too. Yeah, we had said all day, but you know it's the summer, and I know people really like to be home in the evenings with their families too. So I just is it nine to three. Yeah, that sounds good. Is yeah. that or I people be prepared? Here. I I oh, be scheduling around you, but you want me here. I know. I <laughs> that, that, that was from your feedback from last year. Mm -hmm. it, so nine to three is August eighth. Does that make sense, or people rather have it at night? I'm I'm not trying to I dictate. I don't feel with you during the day. I have trainings all through. Yeah. In August. Oh, you're not off that. No, day. I'm not. I'm not off. And I have a big implementation happening in my new district, so I can't, I can't miss things that I'm doing. So I can't do, I can't do during the day. Can't be in two places for months. Yeah. So, at what time does your thing end? As to the end um, of the day, I have to go. I'll have to go and check. It might be eleven thirty. I think I, I think I only have one in one that day. But I, I have to 
not all in my phone, but I know that's the data that I have left off. I'm just searching for a solution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, well, I mean, I've got all day leadership training that day, so I would have to miss that to come to this. So if you could do a half day, I could do half of the leadership training. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just looking. We have had the day blocked as a mm -hmm. whole day, so I'm just looking for clarifying. Uh, so are we saying, so if we do 12 to 6, uh, I'm looking right you're looking? I'm looking right okay, yeah, I don't want to get in a little pull back and forth yeah, right yeah, now. I just yeah, want to really, like, narrow it down. So. Yeah. It, typically, we would want to have either lunch or breakfast or something like that. So if we could do noon, that would be, and then we would start with lunch and then move into the retreat. Would that work for our future superintendent? All right. I've lost track of which time she was talking about. Oh, so now they would get to six? That actually works better for us. Okay. <laughs> All right. New York triple that six. Okay. All right. And you only do. Thank you, everybody. Um, we're going to move into executive session, but before that, are there any other community? Where do you want to do? One, oh. two, three. Okay. Okay, we'll start with somebody that hasn't had a chance to speak yet. <laughs> and then we're going to hold everybody to two minutes. I'm sorry, but it's just like. Um, I sent the letter to Megan for um, a request for an unpaid leave absence for a month in February, and I was looking at on the agenda. Did not get on the agenda? It did not. I'm not sure why, Meg. <laughs> Well, let me just check. It was forwarded to Melissa for the June board packet. What I can do is forward it to the board right now if the board is comfortable with, with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry, that's an oversight, Meg. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm glad you're here. Um, so let me just forward it to the board. If anyone on the board needs that printed because you don't have a device, um, I can I'm sure we would figure it out. out. Yeah, just waiting. Just if I have like a 30 second delay on my. We're all like. <laughs> I have the longest delay that you can have so that I can undo a send. Oh, uh, so send. I that. And I use it all the time because I hit send too early, but oh, that your, that. your drawback is now you have to okay. really wait. <laughs> well, it's going to be like Dinko. We've mouse Okay, there it is. There it is. There it is. So, if you say it, <laughs> it's important for it to be in the packet I either understand. way. So, I got it. Oh, What would be the suggested motion, Megan? It would be to approve um, a leave of absence for McDonald. I move that we approve a leave of absence for McDonald. Yeah, for February, March. Okay. So move by. Uh, Can I just have a quick clarifying question, though? I don't know what the dates are. I just needed to hear if you could approve it. So, you know, it might be three weeks, it might be two, four weeks. I so think I that that would be you and yeah. the superintendent. And we got it. It would be you and the superintendent. We are approving. That is okay. their job. Okay. We, yeah. we don't tell them that you would negotiate that with him. You're approving the leave, they tell you. Uh, okay. So moved by Michael and second by Amelia. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, okay. Any opposed? Hearing on the motion carries. All right. Thank you, Megan. Thank Sorry you. about that. Yeah. Sorry about that. Okay. Go ahead. Well, 
Um, just a quick question um, that I emailed all of you as well. Um, one of my concerns about the timeline of the community forums is landing in the summer when a lot of people are gone. I know this is sort of very likely not possible, but my question is, would it be possible to at least have one forum prior to the end of the school year? For example, <laughs> I, I know that would be a big yeah. But like I know at least six families in Worcester, which is be in our here. <laughs> and it also sounds like they're not able to do the hybrid format on that day. So I'm just in some ways asking if that would be possible. If it's not possible, I wasn't clear on what you all decided about how to include people virtually if they can't attend the community. I'm putting this back into our organizing committee because they came up with a date. Uh, Daniel. I, I heard of an idea that we would have uh, a virtual session on an alternate day because that might be the reason. The day might be the reason that someone can't attend. So we'll get together. Michaela and Chris and myself are the engagement sub subcommittees, would you call it? And we'll we'll work out something and get that out to the public. Yeah, the committee organizing the forums for the curation committee. Yes, yeah. right. So, Lisa. Um, as always, much appreciation, Kelly work. Um, after hearing the conversation, I just have a couple um, specific asks for before June 26th. Number one would be like, make it really clear, please, to the community what the goal for that meeting is. So, very specifically saying that it's a time to offer other ideas and alternatives. Um, and I do think it's important that the community have parameters for what those alternatives would be. Um, number two, Clarifying for the community definitively whether this conversation is being framed by money, finances, or not. Um, I think that is a very gray issue. And I think if we're asking people to come to the table, um, that that needs to be clarified. Number three, I would hope that, um, at least in Worcester, that we honor the 150 plus people who have signed a letter that has specific questions and like make sure we tailor that forum. That's a statistically significant number of Worcester residents who have already proposed questions and feedback. So I hope that we take that in and we differentiate our forums for that. Um, I also think I would also ask that the viability of any options is compared equitably with the with how rate of the current new suggestions. I think there's a lot to be desired on those tables that are available to us. And so if we're we're determining viability of new options, I think that comparison needs to be equitable. And then finally, um, I think Daniel asked, like, what would be gained by a longer timeline? And I just want to say that as a community member who's been engaged in this um, practice for a while, it feels like so much is parking lotted all the time. Um, and I guess that's why, for me, like, the ask is to extend this, because I feel like there has been so much in the parking lot. I hear more talk about parking lot at these forums, and people are desperate for answers. Um, and if we don't have those answers before we're asked to engage, then we need more time to get those answers and then engage again and again. Um, so that would be my feedback before June 26th. Thank you, Lisa. All right, we are going to go into. Oh, sorry, I had one more question to tag on to kind of Noah's point about folks being away, there is the potential that people aren't available on the 26th and also aren't available virtually. It is summer vacation, vacation. Um, and those folks maybe can't get to a meeting virtually or in person. And I think this is an important enough happening that we want to try to engage everyone in as many ways as possible. So my question and ask um, is is there a way for folks who can't come in person or virtual to answer those same questions and share that somehow with the board? So those questions that are going to be on tables, put that out somewhere for the public. And also whatever comes out of that forum, whether it's chart paper or notes that those be made immediately available to folks who can't be there. I don't care if it's a picture that just gets blasted out and shared in as many ways possible. But I find that when you can't make it that one thing, you kind of miss out on everything. And this, like I said, is obviously so important to our community and as much engagement that we can have together and as many voices that we can hear together is really of the utmost. So thank you so much. Great. 
Thank you very much for, for that input and we can include that into a survey. I'm, sorry, I'm gonna go that. online. Okay. 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 Sorry, we didn't really hear someone up there too, but child care too is another thing that would be if it's possible. Again, in some way, maybe even just the community, you know, and kids. Rosemary will be a Tony. Great. <laughs> 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 um, I think that the other form that's really helpful too for families to be able to be there and be present and not have mm -hmm. children around. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you for all of that input. If anybody online that would like to do a comment before we move into executive session? I, Heather Scandale would. Can you hear me? We can hear you. It's a little choppy, but we can hear you. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm having, okay. There we go. Hi, my name is Heather Scandale. I have, I'm from Callis, and I, I have a question um, for the board about um, education quality standards and class size. And I just am not sure um, where to put my question, if this is the appropriate avenue um, when considering class size in the future. Currently, my daughter is in a 3-4 at Callis Elementary with 27 students in a multi-age classroom. And I'm just curious about that and how that has occurred this school year. And I don't know if we have to follow the ESQ <clears throat> guidelines or not. And I understand if that question, this question can't be answered right now, but I'm just curious about that. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. Uh, I, I would just suggest that you reach out to Kat, to your, first reach out to your teacher and then reach out to Kat with that question, your, your principal. That would be the I best did, way. Sure, I did reach out to the teacher and um, I can reach out to Kat about that. I, I, I don't think it's school-based because I think it would be district-wide about class size, minimum and maximum class sizes, especially grades K through three versus four through eight and the guidelines for that and the recommendations. So I don't think it's a specific school question. I think it's more of a district question. Thanks, Heather. Send us an email. Okay. Okay. Now let's move into executive session. Could I have a motion to go into executive session for the purpose? What? Which purpose is it? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So we have to keep it. Yeah. For personnel first, and then we're going to do this little back and forth for a little bit. So could I have a motion? So to be going to executive session for personnel matter. Okay. And second and time, right, um, you're taking notes. No, just kidding. It's right here. Right here. Yeah. Okay. Moved by Chris. Second by Daniel. Those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay. So <laughs> I'm looking for a motion coming out of executive session to you accept the highest. Okay. So Chris, out of yeah, and first one, second, yeah, at uh, 823. Okay. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, we're out, and now we're looking for a motion. Motion to appoint Amy Cohen to hire, yeah, new hire. Okay. Second, okay. moved by Michelle, second by Natasha. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? Cut. And now we're going to, I'm looking for a motion to go back into executive session for the purpose of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds mm -hmm. like Michelle did it. All right. <laughs> so <laughs> Michelle, <laughs> second by Ursula. You mm -hmm. got that? Yeah. Okay. Diane, because I didn't yeah. write that down. Yeah. And to include? Megan. Just Megan. 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 Okay. I mean, right. And now I'm looking for a motion to accept the residency request of uh, number one. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, what did you move to accept the residency request number one? As we did it in the, so the, the first drug. request. The first request, the first request 
Moved by Diane, second by? Yep. Second by Keely. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 No, you no. don't. Yeah. No, I did it the same way. Three votes. The motion is to accept the residency exception request. And we either or say yes no or no. That's how we have to vote. And so I is a yes, you accept yes. the request, and, and nay, nay is you do not. Correct. Okay. Right. So and nice. it's just because the order is always like, yeah, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Yeah, you're so one. You're one or two. <laughs> yeah, no, one. she's correct. Oh. Oh. He's very yeah. much ignore me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ignore your turn. <laughs> okay. okay, so all those, just, all those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Nay. So the motion fails. The motion fails. You want to get Chris? So, and Chris, okay. and, uh, and yeah. this, any abstentions? Yeah. <laughs> One abstention. One abstention. Okay. So let's move into the residency request number two. All those in favor. Is there, a mo there is a yes. motion. Oh, the can I, can you, or is entertaining a motion okay. to accept? I move to accept residency re exemption request <laughs> number two. Okay. 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 So move by Daniel, second by Chris. Yeah. We've split that a minute. Yeah. You got it? Yeah. <laughs> All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Hearing none, the motion carries. Okay, with that, I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> so moved by Daniel, second by Keely. All those in favor, please, please. Uh, <laughs>